Well, would you look at this? It's another toy review. Sorry about that little bang. I, I caught my phone on the desk. That's annoying. This is Ironheart from Marvel Studios' Black Panther Wakanda Forever. It's part of the Marvel Legends line of toys made by Hasbro. Not sponsored. Ch hashtags. I adored Wakanda Forever. I thought it was a fantastic sequel to Black Panther and especially was a powerful vessel to tell a story about grief and how people react differently to the loss of a loved one and the legacy of a life that is left behind long after we are gone. Legacy is a big part of Marvel's push in the comic books and now in the movies over the last decade and a half, especially with the idea of legacy heroes. Ironheart is one of those legacy heroes. Riri Williams, sort of a protege of Tony Stark, she builds her own armor and in the comics is encouraged more and more by an AI of Tony, long story. Uh, Pepper Potts and others to create her own armor, which as you can see here is articulated at the ankles, at the knees, just interrupting myself with the articulation part here. Uh, a swivel at the thighs, uh, movement at the crotch is very, very limited, which is a shame because it means the poses are, you know, limited. That's the key word. No way swivel, but she crunches at the ribs. She moves at the shoulders. She's also got a swivel there at the top of her upper arm at the bottom of the shoulders. Double elbow joint, which is nice. The female figures start getting those more often. Arm movements hampered somewhat by the shoulder bracket. You've got these loose pieces around the lower arm that don't stop the hands from moving, but you may have to pre-pose them and plug them back in. Riri made her MCU debut in Black Panther Wakanda Forever, played by Dominique Thorne, who did a great job. The character was a little underused, but we're going to see her again more in the Armor Wars film. We're going to see her in our own Disney Plus series. The likeness of the figure here is fantastic. That looks like Dominique Thorne. The hair detail and sculpt especially is phenomenal. The recent sculpts of actors for the, for the figures based on the films have been great, and uh, this is just another example of it looking fine. Detailing on the suit is beautiful. The shine to the armor is nice. These loose arm pieces will have to come away because we've got to play around with these. That's right, a cannon for the arm that goes onto the arm without the bracket. And there's a little wire thing here. Oh look, construction. I'm not good at this. It plugs into the back unit, which as you can see, demonstrated by this man who recorded this a few weeks ago in the past with his hands. The back bit also has a thruster that could be placed in to make it look like the character is in flight or about to take off. You plug it in to the back, like so. Come on, come on past Chris, you can do this. Like so, oh, he got it. Wait, he got it, good stuff. You also have uh, repulsor rays that can come out of the hands, but you can put them through these smoke effects, which you can then attach to the hands or the feet. So if you've got a display stand that allows your character to be flying above the ground, then you can have her <laughs> rocket propelling forth with, or with forth, or just, just in general. And there it is coming out of the hands as well. The helmeted version of Ironheart is very nice. I'm not a huge fan of the completely black mask at the front. I prefer more gold detailing, much like her earlier costumes in the comics. But she does cut a fantastic silhouette. This figure is gorgeous. I love it. I think they've done a smashing job on this. It's a deluxe release. I got it from Target in America. Keep your eyes peeled if you want it.